Welcome back everybody. Wow. Start of a new day and a new dawn and a dashboard. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, what it is is that I have to create the dashboard because that's one of, you know, one of the main focuses of this car is to make it look like the car, you know, without spending a lot of money. And I'm just using whatever I have kicking around and using some substitutes that I think are going to work pretty good. Um, but first, let me bring you over. I'm going to warm up the computer, the laptop, and I'm going to show you some pictures of what I got and what I had. Then I'll show you what I have and let's try and build something. I mean, it's just more stuff out of nothing and recycling. You know, that's the only thing. Let's repurpose it all. <laughs> all right, let's go over to the computer. Let me show you what I got and hopefully it's going to turn out in the end. I don't know if it will, but we'll give it a shot. All right, let me uh, bring you over there now. All right, we're here at the computer. What do we have? This picture right here is from an auction site that was selling one of Mikola's cars that he used back early 80s, you know, 82, I think it was. And I'm looking at going and say, okay, well, that is probably the best representation of what I want to do. And I kind of want to make it look like this. First thing first, we have to do this in stages. We have to first figure out how we're going to mount the dashboard. The factory, if you can see right here, the factory mounted the dashboard on the crossbar that goes from the um, both in between the both eight pillar hoops. Now, well, I have to figure out what I'm going to use for that bar. Second, they used a, just the they had a base dashboard in it, which is just a piece of aluminum that goes all the way across, and then they cut out holes for different placements for different you know subsections they can pull out. First subsection they can pull out is the center subsection. What does it have? Well, you have a boost gauge right down here. And to the right of it, of the boost gauge, you have an oil pressure gauge. The tachometer is dominant in the center. And you have two temperature gauges, one for oil, one for water. The oil is marked and the water is not marked. Then that, that whole section, because it has a, um, it looks like it appears to be a green light. I assume that's an alternator uh, light. And a amber light, I assume that's a turn signal gauge indicator. So I don't really know, but I'll figure that out when I get there. But that is removable. All right. But it's still put onto the actual, the, the main part, section of the dashboard with what they call disease fasteners. Right here is a disease fastener. What is it? It's a quarter turn fastener with a wire in the back. You push it in, you turn it, and it locks it. It's a pretty good system. If I have a couple, I'm going to probably use them in this. Also, to the right of that, we have another subsection, which is the oil pressure light and the voltmeter and the uh, kill switches. They use three kill switches in this car. No idea why. I don't have a clue. But, and I'm not going to do that. I'm using one only and that's it. And to the right of that, you have your fuse box. And to the, and to the right of that, you're going to have, it's not, they don't have it on this one, but it's the rally computer. Well, first things first. I'm going to, let's break this down and let's do it in sections. First sections we have to do is make sure we have to figure out the crossbar that's going to be there to mount the actual dashboard and what we're going to use for the dashboard material itself. What do I have? What do I have to recycle? Well, let's go over and I'll show you what I have, what I'm going to use for the crossbar and the um, uh, main part of the dashboard. And we'll go back and forth and I'll show you the reason why I'm doing that. This is what we got. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what is that? Well, this right here is an aluminum, uh, how can I put this? An aluminum cover for a military preheater that was given me a long, long time ago that never, ever worked. I spent money on to get it running. It ran for like two seconds and stopped. <laughs> so I wasted money on it. It's like, whatever. But what it is, it's a sheet of aluminum for the dashboard, pretty much. You know, and what it is, I got one little puncture right here, no problem, because that's where it's going to be cut off. But I got to clean and strip it off. Um, what I got to do is just take out all the pop rivets. And we have this section right here as our main part of our dashboard. Then we have this. This will be for the crossbar. You're probably sitting on, well, what is that? Well, this is, looks like one inch tubing, but this came, this is the crash protection or the side impact protection for the rear of a Subaru. What it does is it bolts into the side, 
bolts into the you know into the chassis and when it gets when there's like a, a side impact hit this keeps it from you know collapsing within itself it's a pretty thick bar i think it's going to do really well um, plus it has this this is going to be in i think this is going to be important um in my mind, I think it's going to be important. Uh, <laughs> but we won't know until we put it in. And we have a box of gauges and some uh, fuse box. So we have to do this in steps. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to take that panel off, get rid of all the pop rivets so we have a nice big panel that we can clean up. Then I'm going to uh, cut off all these mounts because I'm not going to, if I'm going to use them, I'm going to use them in, in a different place. And that way, we have a clean bar and a clean sheet of aluminum, relatively, uh, to make it all work. That's it. So that's, uh, well, let me get my garb on, and then I can go and start cutting all this up, and we can make it all work. Well, first thing we have to do in building this dashboard, we have to remove this bar. And you're probably wondering to yourself, why are we removing that bar? Because you already placed it in there. Well, the biggest thing on the old Audi rally cars is that you always looked at them in, in the, in, inside and the, the most prominent feature was the tachometer. And the tachometer is, is an oversized tachometer. It was like, Let's just say the original, like the standard aftermarket tech arms were like three inches. These were like three and a half, four inches. And at least, because I had never measured them, I don't know exactly what it is. But that's beside the point. Um, because we don't have it, we're not going to use that one anyway. But we need a prominent tack to bring your eyes focused to the dashboard to make it look cool. Well, what am I going to use? Handy dandy 914 tack. You can go out, you can put them up, pick them up on eBay super cheap. You're probably sitting there going, well, it's not going to be accurate. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> as, long as, it, as long as it goes back and forth, all right, it's, it's good enough, you know? And if this thing, you know, let's just say you're doing 5,000 RPM on the five-cylinder, and this thing's reading 7,000. It makes you feel like a hero. <laughs> That's it. So you okay, I'll try to feel like a hero. Um, but, uh, but the whole thing is, was when I took this tachometer and it went up like this, it's like, huh. Well, I can't even place it in there, so guess what? That bar gets removed, this bar gets put on, and then we figure out rough, roughly what the heights and where the dashboard is going to sit. So let me first cut this out, then I'll warm up the computer, we'll go over there, and we'll look at the pictures of the sport dash, I mean, um, the rally dash, and try and figure out how we're going to do this. Here's the initial look of the dashboard. What it is, you have that tachometer that I told you about right in the center, and you have a oil, that oil pressure, I mean the oil temperature, water temperature, you have a voltmeter over here. This is all standard out of gauges, which this one right, this aftermarket VDO gauge right there is standard just like these. So is this fuel tank gauge. This fuel tank is a standard measurement of these right here, which is this. This right here is the volt gauge that would be over right there. And what is it? 52 millimeters and what does that equate to in yank uh <laughs> basically just a hair over two inches um it's uh yeah two and a 30 second maybe <laughs> something like that uh, but that's pretty much what it is now if you take a look at that the fuel tank gauge i'm going to point to it and right above it is the bar that holds the dashboard up that tank gauge is roughly two inches in pretty much diameter that bar to me looks like roughly half of its diameter so or you know the diameter on, on a straight look 
So that would be roughly one inch bar. That's kind of what we have that's going in there. So I think we're working well there. Second thing is that this bar appears to be round because the, the zip ties that go right here and you know for the uh, cable that that makes the uh, kill switch pull from the external uh, an external kill switch now we also have to look at how this dashboard is mounted let's go to another picture look at this picture if you take a look this picture is like you know looking over from the co-driver side you have your fuse the fuse box and you have the uh, volt gauge which is this right here and you have a um, kill switch with the external kill switch cable that'll that'll pull the uh, uh, kill the power externally but take a look right in between the oil light and the volt gauge you're going to see a bolt head and take a look at how they did the um, the dashboard they angled they base what it looks like to me is they put the thing in a break and they bent it down to give it a mounting point so it would inset the dashboard further in this way probably to build room for the tachometer and all the gauges also Take a look right above this third kill switch for some ungodly reason why they had it. This is a one piece that goes all the way down and goes back at like a 30 degree angle. And what it looks like to me is that the entire dash was, was bent up with a 90 degree angle right here, then a 30 degree angle like right here. And what it does is that it makes like a lower console to hide things, I think. And then everything else is bolted in. We're going to try and replicate that. Let's see what we can do. But the first things first is that let's figure out exactly where this bar is going to be. And then we'll figure out the distance on what we're going to need to do to put um, the first 90 degree bend in the actual full dashboard. After that, we'll figure out the height and then we will figure out what um, what, you know, um, how we're going to attach everything else. So. That's, that's kind of what I plan on doing. So, and if you take a look at this, if this is, uh, let's see, no, that's not even a good indication of how to do it because that's more of a frontal thing. But it looks to me like it's probably going to be about this big. <laughs> that's pretty much what it's going to be. So first things first, let's put this bar in, tack it in, and then we'll figure out the first bend on this and I will show you how well, I'm going to, let me show you what I'm going to use to bend it for one thing. And then we'll get this stuff all squared away. I mean, the first, Tack of the bar is going to be the, you know, the most, the most, incruci most excruciating pain. <laughs> All right, let's go over there and do that now. All right, on both sides, from the original mounting portion for the dash to here to here, on both sides, it's equal. It's nine and three quarter inches. Okay, let's build a hillbilly break to start building the dashboard. We need to make the first cut or the first bend, which is 90 degrees where the bottom plate's there. What I did before was I just put this here. If I had a 90 degree plate that goes back like that, it looks right in the center. And it's, that's as far, it's as far as, it's as close as I want to get to the steering wheel. That's pretty much it. You know, that's that's the main thing. So I can set it back a little bit inside here. So what I'll do, um, basically the first, uh, the first bend will probably be about three inches on the first bend. That way I'm going to move it in, move it out, then trim what I don't want. That's kind of the, that's kind of what I think I'm going to do first. So, but let's first make the uh, hillbilly break. Then we can get that bent, start trimming out where we want then go our uh, either 30 whichever way you want to count a 30 or 60 degree backward bend you want to do it and that way we can get this thing all squared away you're probably wondering what the hell is that, that looks like a bed frame 
Well, by golly, it is. <laughs> what is it to me? Angle iron. That's all it is, you know? Um, what it is, is there, these pieces are longer than four feet, which that dashboard piece is longer than four feet. We need clamping force. We need to put two of these pieces of angle iron together, clamp the metal, then we can bend it over. So that's kind of the whole deal. All I have to do is I'm gonna cut off everything that I don't want on this. That gives us two pieces of angle iron. We can put it with some C-clamps and in the vise, and then we can bend a nice straight line. So without any further ado, let me put my stuff back on there, get my uh, cutter out, and we will take all this stuff off. Plus, I have an idea what I'm gonna do with these. Um, it might be interesting, who knows? But first off, first, first thing is we need to utilize the angle iron to bend that. So, all right. Enough, uh, enough wasting my time. Enough, enough wasting your time. Let me just get right on to it. Okay, it's set. Um, this is all cranked down. These things are clamped in, so I have plenty of force. This should be, this should fold right over. What am I gonna, how am I gonna fold it over? I'm gonna fold it over this way, tap it down, and make sure everything is nice and, nice and flat across here. Why am I using a tachometer? Because I wanna make sure this section right here has enough room for tacks and a couple of uh, lights down there. This right here is going to be the place where I have to cut out for the steering column. I've got to pull the steering wheel, pull the, push the column down, and mark that. Now, I'm going to try and cut as little amount out of this as possible, because you see all this writing right here? I want to keep that. <laughs> kind of morbid, but I'll tell you right now, what I want to do <laughs> is when I die, and this car goes up for sale at my estate auction and someone picks it up for like 20 bucks. <laughs> they're going to pull it apart and they're going to look at that going, what the hell is that? Then they'll have to search for the videos. <laughs> I know Mormon, but I think it's kind of funny. So, all right, it's all set to bend. I got um, what, the, what are the measurements is three and an eighth inches there and three and an eighth inches here from this bottom. Whether or not this, I mean, this is actually pretty straight. This is all right there. This is all right there, so when I fold it over, this is going to be the, the lip that goes underneath the, uh, the cross tube. So this side right here, the opposite side of this, will be where the gauge faces. That's hopefully it. So let me <clears throat> get my hammer, my body hammer. I'm going to slowly tap, push it down, then tap it in, and hopefully I'll make a nice straight line. There's our pretty straight line. Not bad. Let's go uh, throw it over there. So it's going to sit like this. Let's go see how where we got to cut it for the bottom.
we have the initial portion of the, of the uh, dash pretty much fitting. And I'm so glad I made that three and a quarter inch lip instead of a two inch lip, because that way I can push it right back. Now, the big thing is making sure the tachometer works. Now, if I do this, this will be another, you know, at least a half an inch inset in this way. So I go like this, you know, if I bring this all the way back, it's right at the top here, which I want, and I know it's going to fit. Now, how we're gonna do the initial clamping of these. Remember these? I cut these off of the back mounts I use for the fuel tank. What it is, this is the reason why you save this stuff, because I am gonna have this welded on right there, and I'm gonna weld a nut in here and have an M6 come through here, here, and over there. That'll be the initial, that'll set us up exactly where we need it to be. Then we can move on from there because then we can bend the bottom portion of it and trim it up even more. But I need to get it locked in so I can make sure. Um, I know this is going to be good. I know this is going to be locked in and that way I can cut or I can bend the back portion of it back further into the chassis to actually make it look like a dashboard. So let me... Um, let me clean these up a little bit more with the uh, die, and that way I'm going to drill some holes, clean that up over there, drill some holes, bolt, bolt this in, and weld it shut, pretty much. So that's kind of what that's what the deal is right now, and that's uh, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> a lot of trimming, a lot of dust, you know. So, but hey, what the heck? All right, now that we have the rough dashboard in, let's go to the uh, laptop and let's start making the gauges in sections. That's what we gotta do, we have to start making in sections. But let's go over to uh, open up the laptop and we'll figure out the first section we gotta make. <clears throat> over here at the computer, now we're doing the uh, detective work. As you can see, I blew up the picture that we used before. What it is, take a look to the left hand side. This is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start on the far left hand side and work over. What do we have? We have the speedometer, above that the fuel uh, level gauge, and to the right of that is the uh, fuel pressure gauge. Now, you probably, and to, the, and to the right of that is a, is a pull switch, which is the, uh, for the lights, for the headlamps, or for all the lights. Now, what we got to do is to kind of replicate what this is, but also building some expansion possibilities, because what I have is not exactly what's there. Also, I found another photo. Let me, let's go to it. This looks like more like a works car to me. Uh, that other dashboard that Bottoms was selling that said it was a works car, it did not look like a works car, but we have to get further over to let you know what I think the reason why. But we're looking at the far left-hand side uh, where the speedometer is. And you can see it has the same thing. The speedometer has, uh, to the right above that, I can't really tell what it is. Um, it almost looks like a, a boost, you know, a vacuum boost pressure gauge, but I have no idea what it is. To the right of that, it says fuel on it, so you know it's a fuel pressure gauge, and to the right of that, you can definitely make out that's a 911 uh, headlight switch, you know, because it has, it looks exactly like my SC. Um, but we're gonna be concentrating on that, on, you know, on that arrangement that we have there. Let's go back to the other photo. Look at the fuel tank uh, or the fuel level gauge. It says tank on it. Well, I have another VDO one, same size as, as all the other standard gauges, you know, two inch gauge roughly. Um, and this one says fuel. It doesn't say tank on it, which I know I had one that said tank on it, <laughs> but I just don't know where it is. So that's our rule. That's where our starting point is. Then um, to the fuel pressure gauge, which is 10 bar, 140 PSI, if I remember correctly, or it might be 120. I can't remember. It's <laughs> something like that. Um, what we have is that I have a 100 PSI pressure gauge, not marked, so we can use it as a fuel, because usually a lot of pressure gauges will say oil or whatever, or trans or 
transmission or whatever it, it wants to say. But this one just says pounds per square inch so we can use it there. And it's 100 PSI is more than we'll ever need in the car. Then we have a speedometer down to the bottom. If you take a look at this, take a look at the fuel pressure gauge. The fuel pressure gauge is a little bit bigger, so it's probably a two and a half inch gauge. This is a two inch gauge right here, just like the um, fuel, pre uh, fuel tank. I'm gonna keep these the same, but I'm gonna expand this out a little bit so if I ever find a two and a half inch gauge that goes up to 10 bar, I will put it in. And that way it'll give it more of a, a, a real look. And then underneath that is the speedometer. The speedometer looks like the old three and a half inch, you know, speedometers, but we have a three inch speedometer right here and it looks pretty close in, and I'm gonna put it right here. It looks pretty close in relationship to as in the size of this to the size of the speedometer. So I'm gonna keep that, keep these here. I'm gonna build in a little, probably another quarter inch wider, just in case I find a little bit larger speedometer that goes up 200 kilometers an hour. I think it's like 125, 124 miles an hour. And this is 160, so this is probably off of a motorcycle. But also the last thing we're gonna put in on this side is that 911 switch, which I don't have, the, the light switch, but I have a pull switch right here that will resemble it. This is very, very thin. And what will happen is if the 911, I think the 911 switches were a little bigger, so you have to hog them out, but I'd much rather have it small and then hog it out and find the correct switch and I'll put it in there. But let's first get this because if you see where the bottom of the speedometer is, that's where we're gonna have to make our bend. So that is kind of critical for that whole situation over there. Once we figure out this, we can make the bend and then we can start building the structure underneath to hold the bottom of the, of the uh, dashboard. See, lots of detective work. <laughs> All right, let me get out some computer aided design or cardboard aided design as Bad Obsession Motorsports termed it. That's the first person I heard it. And uh, we will start drawing this stuff all up. All right, here's the rough estimate of what we're doing for this. Now, if you look at the speedometer in relationship to the fuel gauge, to the pressure gauge, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, light switch, here is the speedometer that we're using. I am, this right here would be a three and a half inch uh, mounting hole that I would have to cut for a three and a half inch speedometer. And I just, I estimated what the bezel would be look like. It'd be relatively clear right there. Same thing with this. This right here is a two inch pressure gauge. The first line right there would be the hole that I would have to cut for a two and a half inch gauge. And that I estimated the bezel around there. So it's pretty tight. Back over here to the picture, same thing. Pretty tight with a two and a half inch to the two inch gauge and with a three and a half inch to the um, two inch gauge is fairly tight. And I just estimated where this pull switch is gonna be. It, it kind of look, I'm just going it off the two and a half inch gauge. I'd say roughly an inch over. That's it, you know. So let me uh, bring this over to the dashboard. We're going to start um, transferring what this is to that and see how it looks. We have our gauges pretty much set up on this side for the, you know, for the three gauges right here and the, and the switch. Now this is just a rough cut on how it's going to look. Then. Looking at this picture again on the laptop, take a look at where the removable dashboard is. The removable dashboard basically comes down, it looks to me like a 45 degree angle, then, it, then right around the middle of the speedometer, it curves straight down, and that's basically where the dashboard is. Now, if I put this here, I just made a rough mark where it is, and I did a 45 degree angle up. It looks fairly close, uh, but all this is a, is a rough estimate on, on the on the size that we need to make the uh, next template. The next template will be for the removable dashboard. 
you know what? I was sitting there thinking about it. Yep, I'm gonna have to do it because when I fold this all underneath to basically, um, you know, cover all the stuff that's on, you know, all the wiring and all that stuff. What it is, I need the removable dashboard in order to access the gauges, in order to access the gauges there, and just and build it like they did, just so for ease of maintenance. Um, first things first, I am gonna measure out a double wide thing plus, I'll probably, you know, from here to here, plus a, uh, another three or four inches beside that and doubled. You know, then we can start figuring out what's the best look that we can use and how we can, you know, what we can put all the gauges in all the lights in, all that stuff, and actually make it look good, plus have room for the uh, Dizzlitz fasteners. So let me um, bring you back over to the table. Let's uh, mark something out. We'll start building it, and then we'll go back into here. And, you know, the whole thing is back and forth, back and forth. That's it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the way we're going to have to handle it. And then after we do that, then we're going to move on to the next room, <laughs> next part of the dashboard. All right, let's, uh, let's go do that. All right, let's go grab the gauges and let's see what we got. Here we go. Um, don't mind my squiggly lines on me drawing it around, but what I did, 45 degree angles up and down, center point, center line, and they should all be equal as in looking at the dashboard or symmetrical. I have the gauges right now are four tenths of an inch because that was my small ruler and this is what it's in, it's in tenths of an inch. So I have four tenths, four tenths, four tenths, four tenths, what it is. And I'm also gonna build off four tenths on the uh, top just to give it, just to make it look equal. And then I'm gonna run the 45 degree up there and we'll run it across and we'll see how it works out. Here, let's look at the uh, dashboard right now on the, on the laptop. Here's a picture of this. Um, as you can see, here's my initial template. Here's the template for the side gauges. If I put it up in here, the closer I get, the better it looks. I can lift it up even more. And the 45 degree angle is probably a little too sharp, but I think it's gonna be good for what we're doing. What I wanna do first is I just wanna trim a little bit of the top off, and then we're gonna bring it into the dashboard to see how it works over there. Here's the center of the column. This is what I wanna do. I wanna keep it as close as I can to the center. That'll give you an idea of where it is. So this is kind of like roughly where I want to keep it, right there. Now, we have this over here. And we have to now find out how much we need to trim of everything. <laughs> so this is where we want it, right there. That's where we want it. Um, we need to build a little bit more room upwards. Same on um, both of them, actually. So I think we just need to start trimming a little bit and seeing exactly where it's going to end up. But that's the main thing is I need to get this thing as I need to have this thing in the center. <clears throat> no offense or buts about it. And I can move this thing over and keep missing things like that. And then we have the light switch there. So it's going to be a tight fit. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be a tight fit. But we can do it. We, it can be done. So let me, let me go get my uh, scissors and let me start making it all, all work.
Well, we have it all in. Um, right here is a tachometer. It's in the center position. I am not compromising on that. Everything else is going to have to have a relationship to that. But what we do have, we have this where, yes, the, de the uh, I think I might have to move it down just a hair in order to make it work, which is fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, other than that, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. I mean, expansion of these two gauges is not, does not seem to be very good. <laughs> so, but I'm going to keep the dashboard all the way over here and run it down. We have our bottom line, we're going to bend it all back. But our next thing is, we got to move to make a template for the next portion where the kill switch and that stuff is, and then continue on down the line to get this stuff all done. Here on the computer, here's a picture, and I blew it up. We're, what is our next setup? Our first thing is we have to take a look. Right here is the line. That's where this other plate is for the fuse box. What do we have to do? Well, we have to install a volt gauge, which is, a, which is this. We have to install a kill switch, which is this. But this is not the correct kill switch, but it, the actual plate for where you drill the holes, it's, it's pretty good, you know? Um, and as you can see, if the holes are right like that, like this, it's in the exact same place, or there. <laughs> That's the exact same place. And as you can see, take a look at this. This is the cable. It runs towards this. It's supposed to be for this uh, kill switch. So this is the main kill switch. This thing, no friggin' clue uh, what it is. I have no idea. So that's beside the point. What we got to do here also is we have a uh, oil light. We have two rocket switches. One's a hazard and another one I can't make out what it is. I have no idea. I don't have either of those. But that really doesn't go into the factor of of what we need to do with this. The main thing is, is having a space for this oil pressure light, making sure the gauge is in and making sure the kill switch is in. That way, because I am not gonna have a kill switch over here. I have no idea why that's there. <clears throat> I'm just not gonna do it. That could be in a switch that you, that you turn on that runs all the rally computers and all that stuff at the very, you know, when you're in park firm A and you're not allowed to touch the car, you wanna keep the, the uh, computer going with the time and all that stuff so you switch this thing on <clears throat> and that way when you um, that bypasses the kill switch this is that's just an assumption I don't really know what it is but that is my best guess but anyway this is what we need to do and this right here is our first problem we have does anybody know what the Adelaide is well damn it took me a little while to find out <laughs> what it is it's a 1259 series hella tail lamp and the best place I found for all the diagrams and everything is on um, rallylights.com I don't know Susquehanna Motorsports I used to know the guy who owned it uh, Ken long long time ago I know he sold it so I'm not sure who he uh, who he sold it to but uh, that light you can still buy on their website and they're cheap they're like 16 bucks so when it shows up I'm going to put it in but all it is is this let me go to another picture this is the diagram of the light. On the external part of the bezel is 78 millimeters. The thing is 43 and a half millimeters high and uses M5s and it's 45 millimeters apart for the uh, holes. Um, <clears throat> for me, all of this, the 78 millimeters, okay, we now have exactly the size that we need to be able to fit to miss that Dezuz fastener you know, dashboard that pulls out. So we have to go right here, 75 millimeters over, and let's go back to that other picture. The 75 millimeter size of this light, we know goes over here, and then what do we have? We have a rocker, two rocker switchers, which, I, you know, there's a good chance I'm not gonna have these. And then we have the uh, light, or the volt gauge, and right underneath it, which is directly in line, is the kill switch. You can also take a look, this light is basically right above the tack. So it's sitting right on where the top of the dashboard is. So we have to go from there, 75 millimeters over. I'm probably gonna leave, you know, an inch and a half inch gap, keep it absolutely in a straight line to where this is. And that way, cause this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make, make the tablet, make the uh, uh, template, I mean draw a line, make the 75 millimeter, bring it over, and then figure out where this gauge is gonna go. And then go down, because this looks like this is a straight line across here, straight line down to here, then we're gonna work it from there. 
I don't know what these three things I'm going to replace it with, but for right now, they're going to be blank. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you the reason why I did all this <laughs> first before doing anything else. But there we go. Um, we have to wait till the end, you know, and I'll, then it becomes more clear on why I'm doing this. All right, let's uh, let me get some paper and we are going to start tracing this stuff out roughly what we need and figuring out how we're going to do it. rocker switch here and a rocker switch here that, and you, this one is expecting to be over here also I think we're okay um, yeah it just misses it now <laughs> let's do this let's start on the fuse box all right back of the computer <laughs> all right this is the next thing we're going to do and this is this is pretty much, I don't have any other stuff to do the, the rally computer because my friend hasn't given back my hall to yet. Um, but take a look at, this is what they have for a fuse box. What they have, this to me looks like two of the fuse of the fuse blocks. They're, they're called bullet style fuses because they look like a small bullet. And what it is, is it looked like they came right out of a beetle. <laughs> or, or I have a Volkswagen thing upstairs it looks like it's came, and that's one of the reasons why I don't work on the thing a lot because I just hate the wiring is just a mess. I hate the I hate, it's easy, it's simple, but it's just I just don't like using this stuff. Uh, the biggest thing is, is vibration. Vibration will the connectors if they get a little old and the crimp because it's all it is is blade fuses in the back. They kind of wiggle out is what it is, and we have a couple things to to, to put here. And what I'm going to do, and the thing is. If you take a look at these switches down here, there's also a pull switch. I believe that's for heat, but I don't really know. Um, I have a pull switch that can go in there for heat, but I don't really know if that's the uh, if that's the switch or not. I have to do some more research. But we're not going to make these things right here. They're easy to do. It's the fuse box we're going to we're we're more concerned with now. But we're going to be modifying that into a position where this takeoff panel, you can see this one, two, three, four Dezuz fasteners, and it's just a panel right here. So we're going to make that next, <clears throat> or make a template for that next. What it is, is I'm, gonna make, I'm not going to have this fuse box. And also, remember, I, I think, I don't know if I said it before, but I think this car I was messed about with because, take a look at this picture, and this is like an Audi archive picture, almost. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it looks pretty close. And you'll see, it has four switches down here, and another. And this appears to me to be a fuel um, tank gauge, another one. Which, you know what, that is very logical, because on uh, a lot of cars I've seen from the era, the co-driver has a fuel tank gauge. And I'm sitting there going, well, I need to find fuel, two fuel tank gauges because I think that is it, but I don't know. Because I, if I had a better picture of it, that would be great. Also, you can see where the fuses have a block on it, it actually states what fuses do what. And on that other car that they were selling at Bonhams, doesn't. And another thing is, if you take a look at the switches down here, those switches are basically metal. The ones that are on... Let me bring them back up the other photo right here. As you can see, those, those three switches right there are all plastic. And I remember reading in a, um, <clears throat> it, was, it was like a, a rally magazine from the 80s. 
forward by Jimmy McRae. It was like the, you know, year end summary. And they were saying that, you know, when you build a rally car in that era, don't ever use a plastic switch. They call them 99P switches and always use the metal ones because in the heat of battle, when you're rushing and you're trying to throw the switch, there's a good chance of you snapping off that plastic switch. And I'm sitting there going, okay, well, if we have three plastic switches there and we have, a, we have looks like a pull knob right there, I'm gonna go back to this other photo and look at this switch panel right there. And I think I might do this switch panel with one gauge or a possibility of a gauge, but the whole thing is, um, because I bet you those three switches are for the spotlights. I almost guarantee you, you know? And if you look underneath right here is where all the relays are for the, for the car because, let me move this up, this whole center console right here is filled with relays. And those relays, as you can see, it says, you know, 53, I think it is, or whatever. But those are standard Volkswagen Audi relays is what they are. And to me, it's a... It's a major hodgepodge, but this could be an earlier car because if you take a look at the gear shift knob, there's no um, indicate or no but push button for the hydraulic clutch. We'll go back to the other one here on the shifter. There's a button right on top with the wire duct basically electrical taped all the way down. That's for the um, hydraulic clutch, you know, or basically it bleeds off the hydraulic power off the pump pushes it into a basically, a, it's just another master cylinder or another clutch, uh, uh, clutch slave cylinder and it just pushes the pedal through. And I heard you can break your foot if you're underneath it. So, because <laughs> you have to remember the pumps on these cars produce up to 75 bar. And that's an awful lot, it's like 1,088 pounds per square inch. So that's beside the point. That was the tangent I didn't want to do, but I did it anyway. <laughs> um, but it looks like this is much more, but okay. What are we using for a fuse box? Well, I'm using a Mark I fuse box right here. And you're probably saying, why are you using a gray fuse box on this? And it's just like, it's a Mark, well, there's a real reason why I'm using it. This is a very self-contained box. And what it is, oh, let me turn it up right side on. We have all the names of where everything goes on the box, every single thing. So everything is contained in a single unit and it's all marked to what I want it to do. Whether it's you know tail lights or backup lights or uh, washer wipes or whatever, we can everything is all here. And we have auxiliaries over here we can use for the um, uh, uh, for the spotlights. You know because one relay per light or per pair. Uh, that is pretty much it on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small template of how this thing will fit in, and then I will make it all work pretty much. You know or at least try. And plus this thing. You take a look they're all direct connect so you have the thing goes in there it locks in it doesn't push back out which is I Here's the representation I did. All I did was I measured up everything. I tried to measure up or as equal as possible or as, as, as precise as possible. Now let's go over there and try and fit it to the uh, uh, dashboard. There's this all set up. This is where the fuse box is gonna go. I'm really, really thinking about putting that gauge right here. Um, I'm not sure what I'll put in. I'll just find something to throw in there for now. And I'll do the switches over here. First, next thing is we have to put the last plate in. Let's go over to the computer and look at the pictures. Let me show you what I'm going to use. Here we are at the picture of the one that I think is probably going to be the closest representation of the rally car. It's that black and white photo. It looks like the real McCoy. The Bonhams car I'm going to show you in just a sec looks like it's been mucked about with. You know, they, they basically took a lot of the cool stuff out and, and put a lot of junk in it. Um, but first things first, let me increase the uh, magnification here. Over to the right, the far right, you'll see that's where the rally computer is. Now we just put up where our fuse box is going to be and we need to make the, the panel for that rally computer. 
Now, the big thing is that rally computer panel butts almost directly up with probably, you know, it looks like a half a centimeter gap in between, maybe a full centimeter gap, depending on what it looks like. But we're going to replicate that and have, you know, a, a replica of that entire panel. And you'll see down to the right hand side, there's an E and to the right of that is a button. That's normally the fire extinguisher system. So when you push that button, the fire extinguisher goes, the nozzle shoot out in the cabin, the uh, back in the uh, uh, fire in the engine compartment. Now, the thing with this is that, see the Dezos fasteners? They're very close together on, you know, next to the fuse box. So I gotta make sure those Dezos fasteners, and they're all, look at, they're all at like angles that, you know, that bisect the corners. So that's how they're gonna have to be. That panel also is, that rally computer is this. This is what it is. This is a Hall to Rally E rally computer. And when um, you have this all set up on the, on, in, in this, you know, on this configuration, you also need the second half of it because the Hall to Rally computer E was a two piece unit. The main, the main section which took all the information and the display. We have, the big thing is, is this, because it's on the back of that panel, we can't have it obstruct with all the disease fasteners and all the other stuff that's gonna go there, um, or anything that will go there, we have to make sure it clears. So we kind of, this was kind of important to have. This is a big thing. Um, but first thing is, I gotta make a panel that basically butts up to that with cardboard, put it on that, and then I'm gonna pull the dashboard, and we're basically gonna make it. You know, do everything right now. Oh, scary times. <laughs> All right, let me, um, let me put the, the uh, cardboard on that while it's still sitting in there just to make sure it looks okay and then I'll pull it out and we'll start doing everything. You know, I think I'm just gonna pull it out, put it on the bench and just start cutting. <laughs> it start marking it up on the bench, it's gonna be easier. With me, hang well, me hanging in here. All right, let me just do that. Um, it's easy enough, two bolts, pull right out. Here's where our computer panel is gonna be, and here's where our fuse box panel is gonna be. I just made this line be a reference depending, not really sure how far across, um, you know, how, how actual the, the final portion of the panel is gonna be. First thing we have to take into consideration, we have, this is a box of old Dezuz fasteners. If you can take a look at the picture here with an arrow to it, this is exactly what they used. And as you can see, two pop rivets here, puts it in there. What it is, is there's a spring inside there. So when you turn the thing a quarter turn, it pops off and you can do four quarter turns and you can pull the entire panel off. The main thing is for the spacing, we have to use the back side of it or the mount for the Dezos fastener. This is what it is. This plate right here, as you can see, this spring is just pop riveted to it, but we have to have this much room in between to make sure we have um, enough clearance for two backing plates and the Dezos fastener to work. Also, how are we gonna mount that? Well, I have two options. First thing is, I have a bar that will come down and the plate will mount off of that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it this way or I'm gonna do <coughs> bar that comes down to do it. I mean, they're both pretty stiff. They're not going anywhere and I'll support it actually back towards the actual structure of the chassis. Um, not really, you know, sure which one, but I think we're gonna build it to the big one, just just because, that's it. So I just thought I'd let you know why I'm gonna be doing it this way and, and the reasoning behind it. That's the whole thing. And when you start doing your dashboard, you're gonna sit there and, you know, don't just put, you know, two desserts fasties willy-nilly there, then you might get stuck with not being able to put a plate in there for the spring clip. That's a big thing, I just wanted to let you guys know on why I'm doing it this way and, and just some of the pitfalls so you don't run into it. That's a big thing. So, all right, let me um, figure out exactly how big this is gonna be, building some room. <clears throat> I'll 
I'll use this, actually I'm gonna use this bar because if I go down to this bar, I, I can just build off of it with a plate. That's no problem. Let's continue. What I'm doing here is I'm measuring eight and a quarter inches here, eight and a quarter inches there, just in case I decide to add a gauge, an extra gauge like the one that's in that in this photo right here. Just in case, I'm going to do that. Um, it's right here. It it kind of misses the mount for this, but it's going to get pretty conflicted with where the uh, desserts fastener is, so it'll probably be right about here. Don't know, but it just leaves me an option. That's the only thing, because I can always take this out and move it over here and do a different mounting type system to bolt it in. Not hard, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty easy. So, all right, now that we got that set, let me, um, fit, you know, let me uh, draw the line and then we can start cutting all of this stuff up and making exactly what we want for the panels. That don't, you know, I got to make one, two and three panels here. The rest of the stuff is inset into the main part of the dashboard. 